Okay, so somebody's asking about the volume and the data. And uh, what I discovered was is that if I had written a trade plan that involved a 20 pip stop, I immediately thought, well, where can I possibly use this one trade plan that is truly uh, a risk, dollar risk, uh, or I guess pip risk, but in the end, it's going to be money. It, but it's a fixed 15 or 20 pip stop. And I start to look around thinking, well, I could have traded it there. Of course, uh, I would have had a rinse and repeat to really uh, take advantage of such a tight stop. Because the market's oscillating, let's say, in a 20 pip range for four hours, or it's um, just a little bounce in a really volatile currency. Um, it's possible for the market to crush into some area, spend a millisecond there, and then come ripping back um, 10 pips. Well, there's your 10 pip uh, winning trade. And what you're trying to do is find the little nooks and crannies where it has, nobody's there yet. So you're looking into the future saying, what are the past, um, how's the past giving me a clue as to uh, where the next hot spot's going to be? And sadly, it's going to be where the wicks um, come to the edge and uh, it's just like a seven pip window there. And so that is really just a, I guess, a hand-drawn view of look back. And a four-hour chart here playing back. It's one week from vertical dotted line to vertical dotted line. So I'm looking at about a week and a half of history right now. But there's plenty of trades in here. Uh, because the market's pre-framed, so to speak, uh, I'm only going to look back one and a half weeks. That would, that's part of the trade plan is you're only allowed to look back X for that trade plan. Because if you look back more, it's going to trade, change the trade plan because now you're going to say, well, what about this place? What about that place? Okay. But you can only live, uh, say you're a day trader. In the beginning of the day, depending on the weather and the way things set up, there's not always um, the same energy available in the market because, uh, you know, the market hasn't been dead long enough. The longer the market's sleeping, the more dangerous the waking period because it will wake up and run either up or down out of an area if you're not a directional trader. And you're, and the more it, <clears throat> the more it meanders. If you have a trade plan for a meandering in a noisy market, and maybe it is to not even trade it, because they're not coming close enough to your twenty pip deep. Like you're looking for twenty pip sales going on, that last. Uh, like these are mini auctions that last an hour, and it's just happening. Uh, now you could run random bots, and I've done it. Uh, random bots. You are kind of, if you know which range bot to run because of the current volatility, basically going back maybe three days, five days, um, what's the biggest bar? So here I got the uh, very top, I have volume, I have ATR of one period, and I have the bottom, the Bill Williams market facilitation index i've canceled all the all those signals there's four and just have up there the uh, low range and high volume filter which is telling me in his formula it's called a squat which is this compressed high volume nothing's going on so it's before the drama entry and it's the lowest risk entry, and it has the best ratio of nothing to psychosis move, except, and this is the problem, if you look at this um, 
line here, um, I did mark off this juicy entry. Also, this one uh, where we even see one of these lines. Now, the fact the line's even there means it is a squat, but this is a way more of volume uh, with less movement. So we have a drop in movement, volume's going up, and this thing is showing the difference. Inside the market facilitation index, you will see four settings, and what Bill has done, it's the only thing he's done that really is a raw filter. Everything else is momentum-based, and the fractals is a raw filter, which this thing's showing. Uh, it looks like Williams fractals. This robot's trading. Um, but I'm kind of just trade. I'm just walking it forward, saying what I take this trade based on. Okay, so we just got a, another squat. That last bar just showed up, and every four hours, I mean, depending on how this changes, that whole bottom will reset inside this uh, playback. You see the whole thing just kind of go flatline. Start over uh, with a new math because uh, what's, I guess it's doing. Uh, well, I don't know how far back it's going, a 1,000 bars maybe. It's taking into account the whole index. That's arbitrary number. The other number here is how tight a stop I can run. So right here it's telling me in this histogram that I, I have to have a 18, uh, at least a 25 pip stop to get in on a breakout because we have 18 pip bars. And if I take it down here, I got like a, a 14 pip bar in the four-hour chart. Very small, tiny bars. Um, and I do think this is the better trade. Uh, and this is why I don't put too many filters on. The only filter I would need is this one, the, the ATR. Because the volume is what's giving me the Bill Williams uh, formula, which is just, <clears throat> it's just nonsense to me. See, I just want to reset. And it's got to reformulate everything it's seen uh, going back now. We still have this marked off, but for some reason it just has to redo the math and everything. Where well, this is the raw data. To me this says, okay, when we're up here, we should be cashing out of anything that we got in on a breakout down here. So my trades are like, I'm getting in here, I'm getting in here, getting in here, getting in here. Now I can get in here directionally, or I can get a non-directional entry. But to me this is more concise. This volume doesn't mean anything to me. I never understood why anybody would look at volume because it, it, it's just literally, okay, it's a histogram, I'll give you that, but what I, I did was I took and turned the ATR into a histogram. I thought that was a better choice. But Bill's is a histogram, and you get different colors on here and all that stuff, okay, but uh, kind of the boring, sad fact of it is is that if you've got a trade plan, for a small, uh, low-risk low entry, um, like that guy was saying, who would go long here, who would go short here, but we could put a non-directional trade plan in place right now. And that would be the current state of affairs on this account. Granted, this is a, this is a very fast playback of the 4-hour chart. So it's, um, I'm just saying, you still have to wait, uh, you know, 12 hours for this thing to make any money. Now I'm going to speed it up to the fastest playback and just run through this thing. So here we go. We're up, we're up and we're up, up, holding this trend line amazingly. Um, now here's a trend line being drawn by the robot. It's doing this kind of channel with a, it's so cute. So somebody wrote that. It's free. I found this on the uh, internet. So there's, uh, I think I typed in breakout system. I have to dive into it. But for the moment, I'm just imagining I'm, I have a trade plan. Okay, at this point, I better be out of some of these trades. And how do I know this? If I go here, and now I'm just going to delete volume and, and the other thing at the bottom because now it's just getting in the way of my breakout system. So once you take the training wheels off, okay, I get what they're saying, Bill. Okay, I got it. You know, it's just so it's not necessary. And the volume people, um, 
We don't need them either. Enough with the volume. I'm sick of hearing about um, level two trade. I just want to trade on the broker that has tells me, okay, this is the kind of trade plan you're allowed to run. You want to put a 30 pip stop in? Okay, you want to you want to run it? Okay, buy now. This is the stop you're going to need to employ. Stop it with the volume. Stop it with the fucking. There's only there's only a couple things going on in these markets. There's either nothing going on, or so it's insane. Why would it be going up so hard right now on the four hour chart? Could it be anything to do with the fact that? It's probably not been up at this price in three years. It's literally going berserk. Is it time to put a buy stop in? I don't think so. Like, I'm selling into this at the end of the hour. If I've got a wide stop, so I want to stop, am I going to need? And this is also going to tell you what trade plan you need next. I kind of need a 90 pip stop on that. We just went up 90 pips, and I'm just going to say we went up. Because I see it without color, we went up. It's up, and this is kind of weird because this is this is better than volume because this is true. This is how what the volume is doing to the market. Volume may be the cause, but the the effect is a huge bar that nobody can deny. That anybody that's stepping into the market at that point is saying, um. I'm going to have to give this mark this trade some room. Whether you're buying or selling that psychotic move, we've just stepped up the risk level. In other words, the margin required to trade that just went up. Although it didn't go up in percentage on your account, if you're in the commodities market, they would demand more margin. The monthly newsletter would say, or every week, they'd send out this margin requirement. Oh, yeah, it just went up because... It's on fire. Now, here comes the three-bar strategy, which I'm going to talk about. Some guy's got a three, four-bar strategy, okay? And it's true. You can make a living from it. If you religiously trade that, break out. Here we have the igniter bar. We just had a sideways four-hour, and you're going to buy on confirmation of the breakout of that last bar. And how do you know it's okay to, well, you know, you can run a 33-pip stop now. The last piece of data says 27 pip bar. Now, you don't have to look at the chart and the grid, so you can just say, and the other question is, what data in the future is important? Well, if we ever take out this piece here, uh, this bar, at the uh, volatility levels that fit my trade plans, uh, uh, that involve a 40 pip stop i'm probably going to go flat because otherwise the future we may not see another 90 pip bar the probabilities of us seeing a 90 pip bar have diminished that's a climax move i mean anybody's going to say do you remember that day that we took out this range Yeah, 72 pips. So I don't have to look at the uh, bar. I could just trade this. If I was a non-directional robot, my view of the world is this. Can we trade? Um, oh, are these our trades? Down here? Um, yeah, with the tight stops, here. Now here is your... Um, Market orders, uh, big wide swing trades, 72 pip stop trade plans here. There's nothing you can do about that. I mean, you either got the trade plan here. Now, here's the trend entry, low range. Hopefully, you scalped out of something there on that burst where you took out this. Looking at the vacuum, the missing um, this is the vacuum of the range so once we fill like the, how long can this go sideways right how long can this be um not going anywhere and when it does go somewhere you see in the chart it falls in the hole 
So I'm looking at the data, the raw data, which is um, flat line. We see low range. People are getting in heavy, heavy, heavy hedge traders are building into this 100 pip range. And then, wow, bam, back fills to this. But once it goes flat line again, it's time to get back in with your tight stops. You could ride it either direction on that. It's, those are clean breakouts. Here was your chance to go long. Uh, also your chance to sell. So non-directional traders win on this trade. Because the continuation people are saying, oh, it's going to keep going up. But see, non-directional traders make money on breakouts because they can run tighter stops. They can take advantage of that first target. What about the um, market orders that you execute on after a giant explosion in price? So even here, if you had sold here on this giant, big, mind-blowing 92 pip bar, you were only able to scalp it. Don't forget, uh, in the in in the real world, <laughs> if you had taken this trade with a big wide stop, you sold here because the volatility was so fucking insane and you're like bam and you're only able to scalp 20 pips off of that but if you waited you made it all the way back to here so if i have a buy limit here it's it has nothing to do with this um indicator at the bottom of the screen now because i'm just buying this hole now if i'm going to look at the market every four hours yeah we're coming into the end of the week now it's getting very quiet i know i can run confirmation buy stops on the top of that four hour bar that have a trade plan with a uh, 20 30 pip stop or even tighter because every time the true range of every bar this is atr of one at the bottom in a histogram telling me okay well i can't get in now it stops i mean it's just fucking this is this is the role that i'm trying to build is that we only take trades when the uh, true range is here right we only get in on these baby bars this bar is too big we either we either got in here and look how they did a double um so from the structure trading the trade plan is I'm always buying this new low. But from the breakout strategy, we break out, we trap people. But if we have an extended exit trade plan that is going to make um, that many pips, that's a big bar, and it's bigger than this bar, we know that the volatility is starting to come, uh, come up. We have a new, a new watermark. And it's just data coming in. So this is, and this does give us a little bit of a, if we switch to the um, other time frames, which you can't now because we're looking at the uh, robot, but I'll just zoom out here, which is the same thing. The high watermark for these trades, which this ATR system, I did a, if you look up the ATR robot, I go through this indicator based on how the robot is going to take trades. Right, this is a uh, breakout, also not a directional breakout system. So we just made a new high there. So I'm I'm going to be selling that at the market, or I just got filled on sell limits. So there's a scalp on the forward chart. Right, we knew that trade was going to come because we already had sells up here. But from the breakout system, this was a very good system because this is coming back to here. And we could get in. One of the robots is going to pick up. So here's the, the dream uh, prop house. Is you have virtual uh, prop house. You have a robot that takes just this one trade. Okay. And anything below that threshold, that robot's in on. So he's, on, he's in on this one down here too. But there's a unique robot that gets in on the very small bars. So each pip has a bot. And so, once the account grows, you put more bots, 
you implement more bots. Right, so you have your field, and each seed has its own height designed for a specific thing. As simple as that. Also, you have your uh, market profile view. You can see the voids left behind. Look at this bear is making so much money off of this top. Can you believe it? It's it's just so stupid that you all you did was sell up here and assume that this is a high. And it, you, if you only made forty pips on that in under four fucking hours, right? That's not good enough for you. Well, if it's not, yeah, you're gonna wait through this whole through this whole um this whole drama where we drip down into finally stop hunting this guy and i'm just gonna say it's a stop hunt because some goobers got to stop there that's bullish because of this fucking trend line we've seen it before we know it but when the volatility kicks up here this is your first clue to step aside unless you have a trade plan for a 40 pip bar in the four hour chart then just forget about it now, it may be throwing buy limits in right now like this that last eight hours. It's completely the way to go. I mean, if you have a limit system, it has nothing to do with this. This is for breakout traders only. Well, it is telling you when you see a big thing here, bump up your stops. And if you do want to get involved in some of the um, violent swings which hey listen if you've got a trade plan where if they smack this down in the next two hours that you're going to buy but why would you want to put yourself in such of a a babysitting situation um i could tell this girl once i said why don't we just tell the why don't we just get a little corral and put it in the middle of the room and i could take a fucking nap and unless this kid like electrocutes himself which he almost did let's just Let's call it, let's put them in a corral. Um, let's be practical, so I'm saying. Same thing in the market here. Um, this is a really uh, bad behaving child right here. Sure, he was all nice. Everything was all calm here when we had this low range, low volatility. Um, this kids, they send their kids to uh, boarding school and that happens. Like Everything was great back here, right? But see, this is a trap. So just because this is a small part doesn't mean that you want to trade that. Um, sure, your vision is it's going to go and fill this hole. And it's going to tumble in, and this is the beginning, the first uh, chink in the armor. And it's just going to collapse down. And you were short from up here. You were a genius. You added to the position. But guess what? Um, it turns out that these these this is the three quietest bars in the whole thing and once it ramped up you could say well it is up and the range is up so it's a big up bar anything beyond that saying that well there's a lot of people in that trade and bill gates bought some is just going well way beyond um now it gets subjective you kind of ruining the whole idea of using a robot an objective view of the market it's just data coming in i have no fundamental view i don't really care about that it's about can i run a trade plan right now in the last four hours the market's on fire which means i can't do anything i'm gonna have to wait four hours for the market to calm down and say you know what i think i see what's going on here um they'll not to say you can't run the 15 minute chart and say oh yeah when the market gets to an eight pip range in the 15 minute chart it's no brainer i always do this trade but that is like um you're probably at a um reversal if it's a winning trade you know that it had to be a reversal mo mo moment you know or you're at a support that is a triple bottom on a half hour chart that looks pretty much like the most utopian triple bottom you've ever seen you know you just oh yeah that's a classic it doesn't mean it can't fail and this is why in the background if you are running a non-directional trading system then um and it's making money uh, much to your uh dismay because it's such a dumb system 
that uh, even though see the non-directional traders just made about 10 about eight pips here so they're coming in we also have three robots coming in on this entry because it's the lowest um system you can run so it's really about how tight a stop you can run if you are going to do the limit system on top of this breakout system yeah they're going to you're going to be in a hedge sometimes um if i'm going to buy down here now which is the obvious entry based on the holes that are left behind of course the market is kind of carving out this space uh this and it's the infamous round number here coming up on and if i zoom out uh just enough here well, now we can see the landscape of peakage and of course remember this day now there's people that would be saying oh yeah you know we have not um don't forget that was the big day that i sold at the market because it was up 95 pips and i had 100 pips stop available and i made 50 pips uh or i'm making money right now i'm still holding it don't forget uh this is only the weekly four hour with the weekly uh bracketed off and i'm playing back at uh the highest speed possible it's a little bit it's a very small math now that it got rid of the other so here's like the classic uh, pullback. Uh, I'm sure RSI is very oversold right now. Um, probably more oversold and at a higher price. We still keep holding on the closing four hour chart here. But now it's getting kind of scary because we have this giant hole underneath us. Now the uh, downtrend traders made money on this breakout here. And the people that traded without, uh, people that traded clear, clean breakouts, uh, either way, they got punished. Now, as you can see, unless you bought this um, on limits, there wasn't an, a, a was there wasn't a place to get in because we didn't have low ATR, right? So this trade plan system only kind of like turns out the limit orders made more money, right? Because we had limits up here. Don't forget, we have to put our orders in the holes that are forming we also still have still have huge orders down here okay for later on or we're thinking that that's obvious next buy zone the scalp plans that we put in up at this tippy top the round number they already cashed out and maybe we're flat now we have to buy heavily into this we take more of our money and stick it down here so these undercuts that go deep for the limit plan okay so right now maybe we're flat we have no way we can get in the market on a breakout because this the market hasn't calmed down so we've got to wait maybe 12 more hours and this is the problem if you don't have the patience to wait 12 hours for the market to calm down and get this beautiful entry It'd be like exquisitely scalped out of half the position. The rest clears out the top. You got limits at the very uh, in the voids to get in the other trade plant coming back the other way. So, if you don't have the patience for this breakout system, then you're going to trade on limits, or you're going to trade the fucking market and try to be a really skillful. Now look at this breakout plan that just went in. See. If you waited until right here, we know we could have run. Well, the, the robots would have come in for us here. I tried to explain this to the guy building the robot. All I wanted to do is execute on a low true range, and I can't get that to happen. In other words, you have a low true range. We bracket it with buys and sell stops. That's all I want the robot to do. The guy's like, what, what are you talking about? we can't do it then um so that's all i'm asking <laughs> and then i want to clone that bot so that there is the small uh right and if you look back in the data it's a no-brainer right it's a no-brainer you see small bars we love the fucking wagon okay it's very simple like here just scan for oh would i would i get in here okay either way that's a winner look at the explosion uh, here's the the best trade is look at this barely moving granted if you're trading um in the wrong direction 
just because you got this low true range and then kablamo look at the expansion like here look at this is the most dramatic expansion is here it's barely moving then up 90 pips into the void okay so we just got filled on our limits finally so even if we didn't get filled on this breakout into the limits right because that was it we we traded this breakout our breakout systems came in here we were sleeping we didn't care Break the break the goober breakout system is always cashing out on something but we had limits in here so we could get into the best of both worlds we <clears throat> were breaking out into the limits then the market order the market bot is going to buy a big move against the market so the market bot is running in the background sells here and it uses a stop based on that move then it then it maybe it sells here sells here sells it sells every time it's up it sells right sell 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 and it runs the appropriate stop for the move this is the market bot based on volatility and that's pretty much it i think that the the thing the human would can do is put the limit orders in uh as far as the um market orders and the breakout tickets that should be a no-brainer uh, robot task i think the art of it is saying okay how many orders did i just get filled on here and i knew i wanted to buy down here more than anything because of this little itty bitty slot down here right this this is the the deal this is so insanely dense and right here too so the scalpers need to get that first bounce to here okay damn they're out okay so you can see that and now here's the the big boys or the deep pocket people are holding on to this floor now we have no trade plans for the atr bot and we only have um market orders available now and limit orders available now so we're out of stop entry mode so you're switching back and forth and it's just how it is you either have people like say you owned a hospital there's emergency times where people are coming in emergency because they're out uh, being ridiculous or something they do something stupid they get hurt and uh then there's times it's doubt look at them coming to these uh in these limiters here so see the scalp you had to only when the market goes into these holes like this yeah you may not be able to make even three pips off of a dead cat bounce but here we can analytically say for certain that at the end of each one of these bars the robot is going to take care of our, us now it's going to now we're going to run moderate risk trade moderate pip risk trade plans now at this point um buy stops are stacking up let's say but you're still having to run this um this stop 33 pip stop these are big bars now now we're dipping into that window the critical window where i'm going to buy just tons now this is a set it and forget it trade plan here i can just walk away basically regardless of currency pair here i'm just going to buy uh limits for the rest of the week and the stop bot is going to have to that's the only thing i can make money from now is just, okay the stop bot just put in stops i know so i'm gonna do in the, in the market order i just let me see so if it's down big i'm buying i mean it's a three uh way approach i just bought because it's down and i just got filled on buy stops because we went to an, on the non-directional system i just went long on buy stops it's like a breakfast blend trading system 
Okay, now I just got trapped and stopped out of some of my low um, risk entry systems. I still have limits below. So some of the non-directional uh, uh, systems are making money right now because I thought it was going to bounce and I still got exposure to limits super deep and I do expect this to, um, if this starts to fill, it'll be violent and fast. So far, the non-directional bot is kind of saving you from overloading on limits here. So this is a more stable overall equity curve is to trade this goober stop entry C. So this is the times that it made a little bit of money for you. And here's another entry that made quite a bit of money for you um, had you, and here once again, the non-directional trading system is making a pant load for you. And we know we're buying on limits right now. We're also cashing out of targets. We know this is right for the pickings. We also got a martingale in and buy so much here. We can afford it now a little bit because we took this stop entry goober system, right? Every time the market is quiet, we have a trade plan for that. When it's loud, we have a trade plan for that, but it's going to be more exciting when it's loud. And uh, like these people I play with, my God, they played so loud, I, had, they, I couldn't stand up. But I drank really high high octane beer, but I couldn't stand up. Um, it was really embarrassing because I just wanted to so much. These people are nuts. They play for three hours and they're done. They, nobody nobody takes a break. If there's not sound coming out of your rig, so I had a new device in the patch line and uh, I had no sound coming out, and they were like, "I is everything okay?" Dude, just because I'm not, uh, just because the market isn't going somewhere doesn't mean it's not about to take off. And I guess the anxiety is that, well, to trade the other person's trade plan, okay, um, if you could put your orders in there and say, I'm going to be this guy, I'm going to be Mr. Goober. You can also be Mr. I'm going to buy that giant void. And look how we just got filled here in a 30 pip zone. Hmm. Super fast playback of the market. But you can only imagine what people are saying this whole week in the euro dollar. 2018. Oh, last year or whatever. September. So you can just say, oh, yeah, what's that like? Um, also. Somebody asked about the Australian dollar. If I pick that time period there, you can see on the four-hour chart, what do you do when the market is actually making a trend move is to get in before it starts to trend. Put your trend uh, trades in place with your tight stops when the market's dead, and then when the market's on fire, it's time to whip out those giant swing market orders and have your limits. Hopefully, are getting uh, filled during these psychotic um movements and i hope we cashed out of something here because that was spectacular so the trend traders or the breakout traders a little bit of a trap here but not that bad about three pip trap so you did lose a little money on your non-directional entry there and then when this came plunging into the limits gloriously as we knew it would we, we know the market will always um not always but if we ever get down into these zones, we know it's psychotic. And now that we've padded the account with our first initial scalps, I'm even going to buy more down here. It's even better. Uh, the breakout bots are in now. Look at it. They may be going with the trend now. We don't care. Now, now it is a little bit. I don't know if I'd ever turn off the breakout bot strategy because... It really is doing okay. Um, the non-directional system. As you can see here, it got some nice sweet trades in here. Those are clean breakouts. I don't see any kind of 
Um, I don't see any fake out breakouts on the four hour chart here. That's a clean breakdown. Uh, granted, it is the beginning of the week here, and so this that breakout bot better have got a 20 pip scalp in right now because now we could totally go ripping the other way, and this will be a structural thing. And this four hour bot, you know, there's no trade for it now. The nice thing about the breakout system is it's not going to put a trade on now. Or if it does, it's going to be um, styled to the pip range. So the moderate stop bots coming in, you just can't think all or nothing. You're thinking, okay, there is a four pip, there's an eight pip, a nine pip bot. They're coming in on those snug uh, eight hours of nothing. Oh, yeah, they're stacking up. There's going to be money made in a just a clean a clean breakout. Um, they do happen. Um, sorry, but it's it's true. I have not been able to build the bot though that can take advantage of it because it seems like the robot wants to use ATRs, and I've tried to tell it to only look back one bar, but. It keeps wanting to use the classic settings inside of these uh, things that people are using. It's all smoothed out. Just don't believe in smoothing it out. What's the point? You're, you're kind of ruining the data. And uh, here we have uh, a potential breakout bots about to launch because we've got a small um, ATR. If we can close this bar out without destroying our chart, See, too late. Not going to do it. So now we got limits below. And the other style of bot that could be a limit bot is instead of a human is once this goes here, we start to throw limits in here and limits in here. So there is a way to make this. In other words, once it goes here, it starts to throw limits wide. And it does, I guess, <laughs> depending on how long they last, I guess this is the only time I can see where all oh, big uh, limits, deep limits, is not really helping. I don't know. It almost seems like you're always trolling for a uh, spike like this. Like on this chart, you'd have to have pendings here, limit banks running. Like right now, limit banks are coming in. There's no ATR trades here, so sell limits are stacking up here. Buy limits are stacking up here right now. I don't know, this thing actually makes money, this stupid robot, believe it or not. Um, here, let me see. I can't. I'm in draw mode. <laughs> Just can't get out of that. Clear that off at all at once. Um, so, yeah, this thing actually makes money. It's pretty funny. I don't know. I have to take a look at what's going on. It is running a trailing stop, though. That's another reason why that robot's making money. But I don't know the frequency of trading. Uh, this to me seems like okay. So we just got uh, we just got filled, or we just launched a couple of breakout systems here. Once again, we're back in the non-directional. Uh, I'd say half of it should be non-directional, unless you're going to pick the direction based on uh, maybe there's an alarm that goes off. Oh, see, look at that. The bears have it non-directionally now. Nice clean breakout. Here's your first 10, 20, 30 pips. They're coming into my limits again. We planned this all out in advance. We knew we were going to buy in here. And uh, once again, the breakout bots, the goobers are winning. Look at this. That's sad. Non-directional goobers. So this is what really pisses people off is that you can have trade plans like this that are so fucking stupid and you're like, so let me understand what you just said. You you sold here because it was a low risk entry, pip wise. Yeah, I know it's crazy. And this is what's very pisses people off is that there's no Fibonacci here. It's mechanical trading. We're waiting for a low, and we're just gonna we're just going with the fucking wind. We don't care. 
Here we got a little trap, but look at this. We're geniuses. And we're not taking any trades in anymore. No, fuck no. As soon as this thing goes up here, you're like, yeah, you know, that strategy ain't going to work now. Of course not. That's why strategy is coming up. But look at the limits are getting filled. Maybe you're still short. Look at that glorious tank. Oh, amazing. And I'm going to buy at the market at the end of the four hours, too. So I'm going to get my limits in here. And uh, look at them just rip that to pieces. Yeah, there's no way you can run a breakout strategy now. You're going to put a sell stop. Even if you make a few pips, who's putting a sell stop at the bottom of that four-hour bar? Really? You really did that? Or you sold there? Not to say you won't be right in the next uh, five days. So the scalper's dream is that we're going to make it back to this monster floor. We just raided this area where we had our martingale orders and stacked heavy here. We just made 20 pips. We almost hit the round number. Almost. So there you go. That's it. You just... You just uh, had a massive bar here at 57 pips. So with eight hours of sideways action, a clean breakout to the downside into the vacuum. Uh, and it just, wouldn't you know it, the uh, non-directional breakout people made money. It's so stupid. Also here, uh, another non-directional trader wins. He doesn't give a shit. The robot just beat you at trading. Mechanical traders are winning. Sometimes. Of course, if you limit your entry to the small bars, here is your criteria for the trade, people. Breakout trading involves placing buys and sell stops anywhere from 2 to 8 pips, I'd say, away. With targets from 8 to 12 to 50 pips. So how to make a living trading breakout. Which there is a guy out there talking about uh, the 3 bar and 4 bar setup. Which is to me the holy grail of uh, dumb trading. <laughs> Sophisticated trading does not involve. Like if you have a Fibonacci tool out right now and you're trying to make money. I mean, the breakout traders are just laughing. They're going, oh, you know what? We just get it when it's really... Like here, you have a buy stop and a sell stop on that last four-hour period. Do you care what the, what the outcome of that trade is? Well, you better not. If you're not a directional trader, look at you just got filled on the south side of that very small one, but you're still holding this one. Oh, look at that. You got filled in the buy side of that. Oh, gee. Oh, gosh, and all my Fibonacci work I've done all these years. Oh, my God. I'd say I have a class in Elliott Wave. I mean, a degree like this guy was criticizing. Don't you realize he has a degree in Elliott Wave? It's so funny. I went trolling this. Uh, I thought I didn't know it was a broker. And it was just a, a two-minute uh, market analysis. And it was a dumb. I thought, what are they talking? 50-period moving averages. Like, what? Well, look at this dumbass breakout system. You could say there's a trap here, but this is kind of what you pay for a hedge system. Also, you could have got into the market. You could also have a robot that, when it sees a small drift back, it buys at the market with a very tight stop. Because it's designed for that kind of world of, okay, it's just drifting down, very tight stop buy. But look at the breakout confirmation, four-hour confirmation breakout traders are making money. That's why people are saying, put a buy stop here and then put a sell. But this is where if you trade a one-trick pony system, you will get stopped out of that move. There's no way you can survive that. Here we have no trade from the breakout standpoint. And hopefully the breakout traders have made money because if we have a clue, we can see this hole where we would put our sell limits. Well, those are our targets. In other words, if you intervene on top of your robot, 
like uh, this uh, Ryan Brown was doing, using the robot to get you in the trade, and then you're going to decide, I'm getting out here, I'm getting out there. Um, okay. Maybe you're wrong. Maybe you should let it go. And that's where, the, the you know, the discipline of having a robot, okay, the robot's going to do this thing for you. And um, it's a, a labor-saving device. But sometimes the robot's wrong. You know, GPS can drive you off a cliff. Let's face it. But look at right now, this robot's making money. Now I would say maybe this is iffy. This is maybe too volatile a bar. If I don't have a trade plan with a 20 pip stop, and this is going to tell me how tight of stops I can run on my breakout strategy. Okay, 26 pips. That means I need about 32 pip stop. A little bit bigger than the bar but this is raw data coming in and here is the the stop hunt so to speak if this is a lonely wick this big bar then they just filled limits there for people you know that are trying to get this big down bar and your market order is here big down bar buy Hopefully you're up on your breakout bot because if you're running all three systems, you should balance it out, right? This is breakfast blend theory of trading. Smooth out the equity. We're not always going to get these. And if I did the daily, which I can't because we're on this, but if I did the, the true range of the daily, you, you would definitely see that for people like this no-nonsense Forex guy that claims he trades a daily, all he needs to do is look at the range of the daily and just build a trade plan around that and 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 just be like you know what that's just it's just it's all you need is the range of the day <laughs> come on people stop with all the stochastics and rsi at some point you have to admit mechanical trading is making money yes you can have a glorious divergence and but some of these divergences most of them have their first week rally is that the so that's not going to turn on a dime and go to the moon anyways look at, look at the range look at the range traders are still making money from this relatively low entry okay we just went past our our threshold we cannot trade breakout now and we're getting filled on limits don't forget right i told you i was putting in limits down here so i knew this is limit territory bliss on the way to that bliss is the breakout, the dumb bot. And now we're not going to do any uh, breakout trading. Like I said this was kind of a high risk, uh, 26 pip, uh, but we made about 60 pips on that. Another uh, possibility is this 26. So the 26 pip stop bot. It, but we're not in on these big ferocious super small bars right these super small bars are going to get more robots involved so those are the heydays those are the weeks we really make money this week the breakout bot is you know he's not he's only had these two premium entries and this one okay so we have our first place to put a buy stop and a sell stop because we have this a nice um i'd say like 18 pip bar So I'm going to run that trade plan on that little so I'll mark it off here. We also have two bars like that. We know we're long on limits now, and now we're long on buy stops too, by default. Hopefully we're scalping out of something. We know that we've got to get out here on some of the scalps. And like I said, the buy stop people are fueling it. The uh, volatility breakers are fueling this. So everybody's in on this trade. We Unfair value. We've had this uh, giant accumulation. Uh, we walked down in through the floor. We were short on our breakout systems here. Here's a trap. But this is where there's more robots in, see. And that all those robots have made money now. We're still long on limits because we bought 
all the way below here also where we got into this whole deep dive now we got the uh, breakout bots about to launch if we can keep this um, true range low here in the next uh, before we close out this four hour bar that'll be another uh, okay so we cashed out here uh, into this wick floor which is right here different than the close so right there we got out we went flat or hopefully we we cleared all these tickets off because now we may have to come in with buy limits but we're also waiting for the close of this bar if it's under this threshold then we can have the ability to put in our buy stop our clunky mechanical trading system comes involved, involved there so they keep on uh, ruining my trade plan there by going up so the problem with this breakout system is you're waiting for a small bar the four hour to do a trade plan and on the um on the big bars you know and this is where you can uh hopefully you're getting filled on your sell limits now your shallow sell limits because you probably have some sitting up on this rooftop in this uh so we left this big vacuum behind and in the big picture for your uh, giant swing trades that you placed on say this chart because you're looking into this giant um even though people made money selling this as it walked down um it's still a giant walk down inside of a bigger uh, thing and now this is the critical moment if we can take out this um well let's see no that doesn't matter now all that matters is kind of like this high i think right here um and uh we just cashed out everybody just cashed out we overshot the runway there right there so that was the big house cleaning and we went short on our limits that we had up on this rooftop now now we come with limits again there's still no trade for the breakout bot see the only uh claim to fame of the breakout bot was how much money did it make when it got in here on this trade and it did pretty fucking good um our sell at the market didn't do very good here because it did not close high right so we had to rely on the sell limits here in this window the sell limits here made money whereas selling at the market was not available because it closed down we would have bought here with tight stops so every four hours there's a trade plan available if it's up you're selling at the market if it's sideways if it's got a low true range you're bracketing uh, non-directionally i'd say just to keep yourself from taking bad trades because you think this is going to come here and golf and go up and you're wrong so non-directional lets you take an objective mechanical trade like this and if you're going to as they call it, discretionary trading you you have your buy limits laced in here even though you know uh, this is like we could go either way also you have your sell limits in here if you're going to be non-directional limit entry and if you're going to trade the market non-directionally you're literally just going to buy it because it's down big down big you buy you know this is eventually a winner it's not maybe up big you it's not up big enough to sell with a wide stop so the big moves uh you'd have to have a wider stop to reap this maybe um or you could have three on once you, you press the button and three tickets go out a tight a medium and a wide okay so you got to figure out how the frequency of trading how many instruments you're going to trade even if you're the best songwriter in the world there's only so many genres you can write a song for and you saturate the market you know well, you could do that whereas this there's no saturation like all your trade plans aren't um gonna hurt the market it's not gonna mess up anything um it's funny this robot's drawing these trend lines i agree with the trend lines it's going down um but yeah so here's the breakout 
pots are feasting now. We just got this fill. Here's our, our next entry. And here we got two bots involved in this. And we're going to go non-directionally again. I think it's the way to go because um, we could tank some more. So here we just made some money here. And we got limits here. Don't forget. So I think uh, when the market goes sideways, let's just say we agree with the market. We don't know what's going on. And we're going to wait for the market to tip its hand. And, of course, we are going to risk getting trapped on both legs of our breakout. We know that going in, that's just uh, the nature of the beast of that system. But we also know we've got the buy limit strategy, uh, sell limit strategy, and market order. We just bought one at the market. And we luckily bought in what I suspect is like a a baby trap, a baby auction here. And the week's not quite wrapped up. And there's pressure building here now. And we kind of relieve this pressure. And that's it. Uh, so um, I think that the range matters. And I think the structure matters, and I think that the rate of change matters. So if we're really down up big, we really sell, and if we're down big, we we buy. If we're sideways, we can bracket it. Um, and if we can perceive the next nook and cranny to be filled, the next vestibule, foyers, what have you, hallways, then we can play that mysterious um uh what you call um set it forget it trading where you just put the orders in uh really deep and maybe they don't fill and maybe you rely have to lean on your breakout on your goober system until your fantastical limits get filled and here we're here we're kind of crawling out of this giant hole here we just took out the high so your your limit orders are finally cashing out your non-directional goober bot got a little trapped there, um, kind of on this move here, but then um, the, what the remaining legs cashed out, and we have sell limits above this lonely wick for the scalp, the reversal trade, which just made, looks like 20, 30 pips. And there is no breakout trades available now it's just uh it's too fucking crazy now you can see here that if we're throwing in 15 minute half hour buy limits that we just got filled there four hours to fill those tickets the spark can smash around you know you don't have to change time frame because you can see that this is a four hour chart hopefully you can imagine what's going on in the 15 minute chart here or the half hour chart or the one hour chart try to imagine um because it really doesn't matter. What really matters is this low. This is the deal. That's support. Is we're coming down into that, and you're still bullish, and you think that this has, just because we trapped these people, we could still trap these people. If you're thinking about the people that are going to lose on that strategy. This is such a big deal because it was this, right? This is a very tall vacuum here. We dip in that window. We pull it back now. We're waiting for it to calm down so we can get our true range trading system going. What is the true range of the last bar is all we care about. So we can't trade this. Um, it looks like we're going to not be able to do a breakout strategy. So hopefully... Uh, we're still holding some of our super deep swing trades with, with the super deep based on this uh, strategy. Maybe you'd have actually one, uh, you know, more than one account, but all the same instrument and different strategies. So if you think about really dialing it in, you'd have a breakout system on the euro dollar on a different broker, and you have your limit order system on the euro dollar on a different broker. And you're, not tr you're just trading one instrument across three different techniques. Market, stop, limit. And then see, okay, well, how's that doing? Okay, that counts. Uh, you know, and that I guess that's the true analytical view. Um, 
as far as from subjective as you can get. It's data coming in. It's data going out. What are you doing about it? Are these historical moves? I mean, are we going into historical vacuums? Um, is the volatility too high for me to trade with an APIP stop? I would love to trade with an APIP stop all the time and, and run very um, precise entries. But is it okay to zoom out, look back, throw in blankets of orders deep in markets that I don't give a fuck about? Or do I feel I need to look at the market every four hours and assess, okay, do we have a small range? Can I get in here? Look at the ro the fucking breakout bot nailed this sunny uh, night entry here. Another dumb shit winning trade by the um, dumb shit uh, non-directional bot here. It got filled only on the south side. Look at that. Inside bar even. And, of course, our limits are getting filled that we could perceive this low. We knew about that low um, months ago. Like This goes super deep. So here's the issue, is that when we come down here now, this will be insane. Insane, possibly. I just sit back and wait for them to come into those tickets. Those are good all week long. They're, they're good forever. I'd say all month long. These This is ripe for the buying. And we just made money on our breakout bot. Now, this is the first dip in the window. And if the breakout bot gets involved on the short side here, it'll be pure genius because if we have a low true range trigger. Oh, that's so fast. Kind of trap people right at the borderline there. So once again, the people that trade with 10 pips stops at the borderline just made their 20 pips. You know, the cruel fact of trading. You can see this happen endlessly on a four-hour chart. Just put up a four-hour chart, play back the market. You should be able to see that was a hot spot. Somebody made money. They made their 20 pips very quickly. Now, here comes the breakout bots. Looks like I'm going to crush into the hole here, maybe. Waiting for a small bar. We're not getting it. So, small-ish. Now, here is the, th the qualifier. How small is this bar? Oh, 26. I'll trade a 20. If I have a 21 or 23 pip bot, it's taking all the trades under there. Okay, it looks like it got filled long if I did have a 23 pip breakout system. I'm holding my limits from the very low trap here. I'm, I'm looking for a full tilt auction where we take out this especially considering the meltdown that's been going on for how long now? I mean, this is getting ridiculous. There's got to be even divergence showing up here. So this is how we're going to wrap it up. It's the four-hour chart. And we're going to look for the small bars for entry for a particular kind of entry. It could be uh, pure confirmation. Let the market decide. And the bias is decided by the market. Which way does it really break out? We, we will get trapped on a few tickets. It's possible. Sometimes it's a clean break. Sometimes it's not. We never know if it's a clean break or if it's going to be a sloppy breakout. Then as far as the Market orders go. Um, you do have to wait for the market to go down really hard and actually finish down hard and buy one at the market, but it, uh, you're probably going to put some limits in in front because you probably, if you really think it's going to turn around, you realize that if you don't have the breakout trade plan available, it's time to go to limit mode and market mode. There's no other choice if you're going to try to take advantage of uh, prices. Right now you've got your you're got your finger on the trigger for the market order and you're waiting for the um, limits to fill. If they don't fill, then your market order is the one that is the winner and you still have your breakout systems that are making money because of this last low range uh, move here. A little trap here, but this robot made up for it. So you're short on stop entry confirmation. 
and now you're coming into the limits and you're waiting for the end of the mar end of the four hour period to do your market order so I try to build a system I mean I try to run this script actually where it keeps launching a tight entry the problem was it was getting trapped because it was launching every it just launches every four hours right irregardless to the range every four hours it launches it makes logical sense that well the market's either going to keep going or it's going to turn around but getting the spacing right getting the volatility right if this market should heat up and start moving 120 pips per day for five days straight then you know the four hour bot that's non-directional is making money typically not that kind of um and it's going to get trapped and this is where your limit system and your market order system is going to pick up the slack and make the money. By the way, I'm up four grand on this stop. Um, I'm trading without stop, swing trading the uh, market here. This is the playback, but I'm actually in risking the whole 10 grand of the account here. Inside the, uh, I just bought some, um, I just went totally long. I, I went and sold against the dollar. Went long the Australian dollar, long the pound, and long the uh, the laggard looks like the um, euro dollar. Oil still melting down. I'm still I'm getting killed on these tickets here. By the way, so I'm going to put some buy limits here in the logical place. I'm going to put buy limits down here in front. So the buy limit strategy, yes, you can't live um, off of one strategy. So people say, and the reason I focus on the limits is because um, that's the difficult part, I suppose. Anybody can trade a breakout system, confirmation system. I think that's... Uh, here Now here I'm not going to use the A tier. I'm just going to look at the chart and say... Okay, I can see my trade plan on the 30-minute chart. Uh, Non-directional buy stop, see how that works? In other words, you're just putting in a buy stop because you have a small range. Now, you don't have to have the histogram down there, but it trains your eye to go, oh yeah, I see what you mean, small range, I get it. Looking for a small range place to put in a non-directional trade. The problem is if you if you take every small bar here, at some point you're going to get chopped to death. Whereas on the four hour chart, not a lot of small bars. Look at this small bar city, and then finally, and here's where the algo stacking up, New Zealand dollar. The algorithm stacking up with buy stops, sell stops, buy stops, sell stops, and then finally it gives way, right? And this is a great trade. Um, here it's not a great trade in the sense that it's, you know, okay, breakout, go up, but it's like, oof. And look at this currency, it's barely moving, right? I mean, it depends what you're trading, like four hour, um, or the, how about the daily? Let me take the volume off here. Um, scratch it down. Look at the daily, uh daily true range here so i like this uh visual thing uh just you know these are small bars okay i got trapped here in a 10 pip but i made 200 pips on that right if i'm going to trade narrow range breakouts 30 pips right we're risking 30 pips here to make like uh 120 150 pips but what the key is is that right now we've just failed to fill that void total failure yeah plus we have this trend line of break i want to get in really heavy here and hold this and just walk away from this trade we're breaking the trend line i'm not buying i'm not chasing i'm also not going to chase this thing no way i'm buying now the sellers are just above here in fact i could cash out go flat and reload on very snug limits 
So if you do trade limits only, you really have to know when it's time to get the fuck out because unless you got that uh, money management system, also you could have the, when it gets narrow, and this is what causes those moves, when it gets narrow, you know, the money management systems are coming in and they're getting people out. Right? The trailing stop in one direction only. So you could have a directional trailing stop entry too. You don't have to get in bracketed. So it's kind of a bottomless pit of how you want to do it. Say you had a low um, range and you're running uh, trailing stops here because it's low range and then you just get filled. Then low range here are filled. But only in a confirmation breakout situation. So here you're getting filled on the sell side and your trailing buy stops are not filling, but you could turn off the trailing buy stops and just go into pure sell mode and only run uh, trailing sell stops. You know, when, when it's called for because the range is small enough to run a very tight trade plan. Here I'm not going to buy uh, any more of this a euro dollar because it's I'm just not going to, um, I, unless I'm scalping it, because I know there's sellers right here. It's like I'm already in, and every I'm almost at break even on this very deep entry, and I have limits that haven't filled yet either. But yeah, you could take a ten thousand dollar account and it swing trade the shit out of these things, especially when you see these catastrophic moves like this. Like, look at this wick. Look at this hammer on the weekly. Even if you're a candlestick trader, how can you not deny that that's a fucking hammer? Nothing's gonna change that. We laid in a massive hammer back here. You could have bought more. We never even took out this bottom. So we're in the buyer's window, right? We're in the void. It's got to get above this floor and then engulf and then take out this. And then, yeah, then, then it's like, forget about it. They'll raise interest rates over here in New Zealand. Again, there used to be a time when I think it was like 5%. You can get our money here, I think. Um, and that's a fundamental view. Is why is it so cheap now? Is interest rates are so low. But yeah, that that could all turn around. But you could yeah, you could hold out on this account and, and end up making a million dollars if you got out of this trade in five years and people would say, Oh wow, can you do that trade again? Probably not. I mean, not like that. Who knows? I mean, look at some of these moves on here. Come on, people. Are you kidding me? Look at this double top. What the fuck? I was telling this girl from New Zealand, I said, right here, I thought, I swear to God, I thought, and I was pretty excited. I was telling everybody on Skype, dude, we're about to take out the fucking, this is going to go fucking to the moon. Did not happen. It so did not happen that once it came back and started to rifle through this area, holy shit. So yeah, all this stuff, how far in the future are you talking about? So, yeah, this here is going to be a big situation, a New Zealand dollar, this here into the future. But right now, what can you possibly do about this market right now? Well, you're holding it, you know, holding these longs here as we go screaming up. I know there'll be sellers here, and I could go flat on the whole account here. And I probably should go flat tomorrow. I'm, I'm sorry, by like Wednesday, I should get out everything I'm in up on this thing and let the crude oil losers become winners again. My crude, crude oil trade is still bullish. We've still got a bullish cloud here, son. Um, but yeah, it looks like uh, the Canadian dollar is going to get smashed. I'll put some buy limits in here uh, for the bounce. So the party's over for uh, the dollar. Looks like they trapped everybody up here. Still looks bullish, though. Like I said, they can all go up. The euro can go up. Um, they can all go up. Look at New Zealand versus the yen. This is doing the best. Look at this stop hunt here. Wow. 
See, here's where your 15 minute and one hour trailing limits are making money. And the breakout bot kind of got its ass kicked here. Yeah, I don't like. Euro has a nice breakout system. Here you'd have to go for the dailies, I think, for breakouts. Like I said, if you're the Forex, if you're one of these no nonsense Forex fans, rethink it because um, he talks about ATR. What he doesn't realize is that this is his trade is to put sell stops and buy stops in here and just walk away. Same thing here. Market gets into a small pip. There's no trade from here, but here's his, here's his entries. Here, this isn't even tradable for him if he doesn't have a tight entry. Here, I would say the auction traders are winning. Uh, even the breakout guys are winning. Here, the breakout guys cleaned up. And here's all the limit guys cleaned up selling that window. All right? We're trapped below the floor here. We know sellers are coming in here. Most people get a cash out there. Then they can come back and try to buy the retest here. They're going to try to sell up in here. And they're probably selling uh, right here to play a little um, 20 pip uh, volley. You know. Now, if you go to the smaller time frames, which is a little mind bending after looking at four hour charts, but if you can see, this is your entry on your limits. And here's where your um, your half hour pivot game's going on. You still have these, you know, thirty minute black swans that you could have picked up on limits. So it's a completely different thing to put a buy limit bank in here on the thirty minute and go. Oh yeah, well, obviously, if they come down here and they raid this whole vacuum, or even here, and you never get that. And you got the trend lines here, and all the trend line people are on the half hour chart going, Yeah, the trend lines break, break work. Trend lines work. Yeah, there's a break in my trend line. I got in there. What are you talking about? The structure people are going, Yeah, what are you talking about? Here's the pivot. I mean, I'm just buying here at the pivot. You know, the stop hunt people are saying, Yeah, I'm just buying this giant sell off in the end of uh, beginning of Asia. And I'm hoping they're going to take out the high of the day. They did, so I got the fuck out. And then the breakout traders are buying this. Oh, it took out the high of the day. It's a, is it a confirmed breakout? Let's buy after the confirmation. We pull back to the breakout point, and those half-hour traders are getting in now. But are you a half-hour trader? Right? Are you on this half-hour chart taking advantage of every zigzag? Or are you looking at the no-nonsense no Forex guy you know, it's just so funny. This guy has so many filters to get into a trade. You could just blow your fucking brains out. If you're really a trend trader on the daily chart, I think it's pretty obvious your your trade, you know. I mean, you can see the fucking structure on closing prices. If you haven't figured out the closing prices are not the high and low of the day, that the close of the day is when they settle these contracts. Um, hello, you know, the, the stock market, there's at the end of the day <laughs> i mean that is it they settle their books at the end of the week you know a bitcoin is the only unique instrument that actually is liquid all month all weekend long it's the relief felt and it behaves like a real market you know it's the structure of six thousand fell through the floor came back okay now what that's a whole different now that's the market has canceled okay you know, if you play chess, it's either a queenside castle or a kingside castle. Okay, it's done. Now what? That's that track's laid. There's no, you cannot change the past. I'm so sorry. So that's it. That's my four.